So what is the most dangerous city in the state of Nebraska? In fact, one of the most dangerous cities in the United States. Well, it's right here in southwest Nebraska. And the name of that city is called Max, M-A-X, Max, Nebraska. Now you might wonder why a small city would be a danger to the state of Nebraska and to the United States. Well, first, you gotta go back into history. About 120 years ago, the city of Max started up when the railroads came through and every eight miles they had to put up a water tower to keep the trains running so they didn't explode running steam and fire. Be that as it may, Max was born about a mile east, but then they uh, had to move it down here because it was right at a corner and they tipped the train over on that corner so they moved it down here where it is now. And you'd say so? And when that town started, they did one very important thing though. And that important thing is they did not incorporate the city. Now how important is that? Well incorporate means you're going to be a corporation. Don't matter whether you're private or government, you're a corporation. And a corporation can best be summed up by uh, me telling the story about uh, going out to Walmart one day there in McCook and the old uh, walked up to the manager I saw him and, and I said sir looks like you're gonna be getting more of McCook's money cuz Wheeler's a giant store at the time went out of business because of Walmart coming to town and he said uh, we don't want more of McCook's money though that old manager said we want it all well so it is with every corporation be it private or government they want all of your money so here in Max, Nebraska, they found a better way to do it. And they did it without being incorporated. They did it without government. So how did Max survive and grow without government? Well, pretty simple. The women of the town started a club. And that club did all sorts of money-making events. And they saved up enough money through the years to buy this piece of ground to make it into a park. And then they bought different, different buildings, everything from an outhouse, and now they've got a fancy building with indoor plumbing. Not a penny of it was taxes, not a penny. Nor to keep it up, including the street lights. The women's club pays for it, for the different things that they do. And it works quite well without government. Well, let's start at the bottom. How does a city run without a government and roads? We start at the bottom, so fine. Well, I've seen it a number of times in this town, that a number of times when there's a pothole, you'd see an old pickup pull up, stop, come off to the side of the road, and dig up some dirt and come over and fill the pothole. Cause you see, none of these are paved roads. There are no paved roads in Max, Nebraska. And they get by just fine without it. I said they get by just fine without paved roads. And I've even seen some little old ladies stop their cars and get out with a shovel and fill a hole if need be, if need be. In the winter time, they got a couple of good old boys, farmers in the area, that come through and bust the main roads open for them, they do. Do things like that. And sometimes uh, they have some of the local youth get together and they'll clean off sidewalks for some of the old. You can't ask for much better community than something like that, I'm here to tell you. And they did it without government. So instead of having an incorporated city that has a city manager making $200,000 a year and a uh, he'd call the uh, roads department of the city manager that's getting a hundred thousand dollars a year then that city roads manager would call the uh, one of his flunkies at, that's making thirty thousand dollars a year to drive a thirty thousand dollar brand new pickup over to fill that hole this city has found a better way. So how do you survive in a city without law enforcement? Well, this city's done it for 120 years. You might want to ask them how it's done. For example, now they did have a bank robbery. I said one in 120 years. In fact, this bank right here. And what they did, they took an uh, uh, old bank robber and he took the employees and the bank manager and he put them in a vault there slammed the door shut on them, locked them in there. Well, the old bank manager 
He said, you know, a bank vault is made to keep people out, not to keep people in. And so what he did, he had already pre-taken that door, inside of the door off, and then just tacked it up there with a couple of little bitty screws to hold it together. So he reached over, got his flashlight, screwdriver, unscrewed those, flipped the lever, pushed the door open, that easy. Walked over to the window, wrote down the license plate of the getaway car as it sped away. That was how easy they solved that crime. That's how easy they solved that crime. And there's been a few robberies. One guy uh, was robbing, uh, stealing some stuff, and the guy came up to him, and that, uh, the robber was very glad to see the county sheriff finally show up because he was facing, you know, a very large bore caliber handgun. And so he was very glad to be arrested by the county sheriff. But as far as law enforcement, they don't need it here. And they openly say they don't want it. They said they don't want to have to worry about turn signals and uh, getting arrested for the drop of a hat. And rest assured, on dirt roads, you don't speed. You don't speed like you think you can on a paved road. And nobody in Max is in a hurry. Can you imagine that? You go to these big cities, be it Denver or Omaha or some of the others, everybody's on a hurry. So fast they can't get there quick enough. And they don't care if they run over you getting there. Not in Max, Nebraska. It ain't that way. Now there are a few downsides to Max, Nebraska. Again, no pavement. And you'll see signs like this heading out of town in a number of directions saying, travel at your own risk because the roads are less than perfect. But that's a small price to pay because most everybody knows that the roads aren't perfect and they drive accordingly. Use a little bit of sanity. Unlike the big cities that everybody's in a rush to get here and there real fast, everybody takes their time. They wave at everybody that drives by them. And more than likely, they'll pull up beside somebody and just talk for a little bit and see how they're doing. You don't find that in the big cities, I'm here to tell you. And so what few negatives they have in this community are far outweighed by the idea that there's almost, if very little, if any governmental control here, and for sure, it's not incorporated. You don't have building code inspectors ready to destroy your life and law enforcement on every block. You don't have drug pushers that are endangering your family. These small communities are a blessing and they show the rest of the nation, and in fact the world, that it can be done without government. I said without government. Rate this film. You have a good day.